The third day of the creation week is a transitional day within the creation week. The creation week is divided up into several days of forming and then several days of filling. God takes the unformed and empty creation, forms it into a world with heaven above, earth beneath, and waters under the earth, and then fills each of those environments. But on day three, God does, God does both. He both forms and fills. He divides the land and the waters so that uh, dry land appears. And then in the second half of day three, he speaks to the land and the land produces plants. Uh, that's a significant moment in the creation week for a number of reasons. It's the first time in the creation week that we see the creation participating, as it were, in its own completion. Uh, the land doesn't have the power to bring spring up with plants on its own. It only has that power because God speaks to it. But when God speaks to the, to the land, the land springs up with, uh, with grains and fruit trees. So that's the first time we see that in the creation week. And we see other examples uh, in the creation week where the creation itself is producing things that God has commanded it to produce. Uh, this is also, also the first time we see something coming up from the earth. We'll see other things coming up from the earth in the, later in the creation week. Uh, we'll see animals coming up from the earth, land animals. Uh, we know from Genesis 2 that God forms Adam from the dust of the ground. So human beings are brought up from the earth. Uh, plants are the first to come up from the earth. They're the first fruits of the earth. And they set the pattern for the other uh, things, the animate things, the animals and the human beings that come up from the earth. Uh, well, another link that you can see between plants and uh, animate uh, creatures is the, is the uh, idea of fruitfulness. God speaks to the land. He tells it to produce uh, grains and fruit trees. And he says, be fruitful. Uh, that They shall have fruit in them. The, the, there should be fruit with seed in it. And that's the same kind of language that he uses when he speaks to the uh, beasts that are in the water, the beasts that are in the land, and to human beings ultimately, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So as we'll see in the, in the next episode, there's this built-in connection between plants and human beings that's found in the creation week. That's not something that's imposed later. One last interesting thing about the third day is the, the kinds of plants that are specified on the third day. Perhaps God created all plant life on the third day, but the ones that are specified are vegetation or grasses that have seed in them and trees that bear fruit with seed in the fruit. In other words, grains and fruit trees which are the origins of bread and wine. Uh, the first plants that come up from the earth are the sacramental plants, the plants that are going to be uh, permanently important for the people of God. These are the plants that we enjoy at the, at the Lord's table, and they're the first fruits of the earth. When we're enjoying the bread and the wine of the Lord's Supper, we're enjoying a new creation uh, because we're enjoying the things that God has brought up from the earth in the first creation, now enhanced and renewed and made more glorious by Jesus Christ.